What is going on guys, this is Zoe with No Days Off DFS here to bring you that NBA preseason breakdown for the two game NBA slate we got today. A little bit different from the big seven games that we had yesterday, but you know what? We will take it. NBA preseason is here. That means the season is right around the corner and you guys know I cannot wait to go ahead and break this down and get, uh, honestly, just, just the season to get started. I am so ready for that, that to actually be here, but... Nonetheless, you know, this basketball to be played. If I'm going to research it, I'm going to play it. I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff out here for you guys so you guys can get some nuggets and stuff as well, too. If you're new here and you guys have not hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that I'm putting out for all the sports that I cover. Uh, covering a wide variety of stuff right now. Of course, like I said, the NBA, NFL. I'm going to be getting into some hockey. Played some hockey for the first time yesterday. I'm getting the process down. Not too bad. I will be breaking those down once I get a better footing and a better hold on that. Um, just to put out more and more information for you guys. And uh, we can learn together in this but definitely feel like I got a pretty good process. Uh, of course, it was only one day, only one day. So I'm not going to toot my horn too much, but I um, definitely feel like there's some things to build on and, and some more things to understand and learn with hockey. So I can't wait to bring that to you guys as well. But definitely hit the subscribe button if you guys haven't done so, so you guys don't miss any of the videos I'm putting out. And if you guys are looking for the player pools, the cores, um, all the stuff that I'm putting out over here for the No Days Off group, Check the link down in the description below for the Patreon. It's only 10 bucks, and I promise you, you make that back within your first week. It's not only my stuff that you're getting with my player pools, my cores, my props I'm putting out, all that stuff. You're also getting all the other contributors that we have over here at the No Days Off group that are putting out bangers as well. My boy BK yesterday went on a nice little run. You know hockey is his, his second love, his second sport that he likes to uh, put out. So if you guys are looking for B, uh, Dion, he's right here on Twitter, Dion Boykin at Dion Boykin one go ahead and hit the follow and if you're trying to join the patreon he also has a link right there um up top he is the ceo the main man of this this group right here but if you look at it he put out quite a few bangers yesterday um i only missed one in this this six pick right here um put out a really great slip over here on the uh, what is this one sports battle uh, seven pick two of them pushed but still i uh, hit a lot of the picks in that uh this one right here all four cash in this uh, power play that he had right here but um honestly a uh, pretty pretty good pretty good first um hockey slate to to tell you the truth so definitely uh check that out he always posts a couple of free picks over here on his twitter as well so definitely check him out follow him on twitter if you guys have not done so already uh at dion boykin one so where you guys can get some of those free nuggets that he puts out but if you want to try to see all of his stuff then definitely check the link down in the description below for the Patreon. And like I said, it also gets you access to the Discord. And inside of our Discord, we got some really good ghosts in there. My boy, Jorce, uh, he puts out a lot of, of ladders and picks and stuff for you guys for the... Um for DraftKings sports books, for FanDuel sports books, any sports books that you have, his ladders are crazy. I want to say that the, the kid is on a run right now. And then also King Kwan as well, uh, esports, um, uh, college football, second half props. He kills those. So definitely check those out. We got some really good hitters over here uh, with us. And if you guys are looking for, for some more content, things like that, definitely. It's only 10 bucks. I promise you, you make that back within your first week. All right. Um, going into... Let's let's recover uh, yesterday's slate. So yesterday's slate was not a bad slate at all. Really kind of felt like, like we hit a lot of the stuff on the head uh, correctly in regards to like minutes rotation, things like that. Um, one thing for sure, I was a little surprised with the Hawks. They actually let the starters, uh, some of the starters uh, get a little bit of burn in that, that um, what was it, in the third quarter, which was a little shocking. But um, Trey Young had a pretty good game out there. The Hornets. So the initial report that we had about the Hornets were that they were all, they were going to play, what, 12 to 14 guys, and starters were going to see sub tw uh, 20 minutes, something like that. Look what the starters actually got. I missed the second report saying that the starters were actually going to play about 20 to 24 minutes. So, of course, LaMelo Ball, Terry Rozier went out there. They balled. They had a good game. Um, but uh, rookie, uh, Brandon Millen. That didn't do too bad off the bench. Uh, Nick Richardson, if you got him, he was actually really good, uh, decent uh, point per minute play out there as well. Um, so not bad. And then over here on the Heat side, really was kind of up in the air with the Heat in the news because we really didn't get anything for them. But uh, Tyler Hero, he played into that second half. So, of course, Hero, he's a firecracker, goes out there. He did pretty good. Uh, Jaquez um, didn't do bad in his time, really was uh, liked him. I put him up on my, my sheet that I put up for uh, my player pool. Uh, Swindler, talked about him on the stream, went out there, lit it up as expected. 17 points, 5 for 9 from 3. Uh, two rebounds, really good game. Uh, also with the um, the three-point boost that he gets out there. For the Pacers, um, Matherin really kind of let me down. I'm going to just jump straight to him. Halliburton didn't play. Matherin, he let me down a little bit. Yes, he had 14 points, one assist, five rebounds. But he kept going in and out of the line. It was really kind of funky what they were doing with him. Only played 18 minutes. But uh, Jairus Walker, if you got him, uh, not too bad. 27 minutes. Wish that he would actually do a little bit more uh, out there. Neesmith, another one I, I had mentioned on the stream. Uh, not bad, 18 points, but you kind of want more in these, these situations. Over here for the Houston Rockets. Mm. 
really wasn't too much to, to write home about. Jalen Green kind of really wish not even kind of, I wish that he did more. I was went with him over Jabari just because I felt like, okay, of course, he's going to get his shots. He's, he should uh, be able to light it up. It's preseason. It's the, uh, the Pacers. Um, guards, that's one way that we used to attack him last season. So uh, really, really kind of a letdown spot for me for Jalen Green. But Jabari Smith Jr., the aggression, everything's there. Looked pretty good out there. Didn't do too bad, 14. And then uh, Tar Eason, I know I talked him up a little bit. Tar Eason, 11 points, the two steals, the block, uh, the assist, the rebounds. Told you guys he is a fancy point per minute producer whenever he is out there on the court. Cam Whatmore, not too bad. Uh, let's see. Scrolling down, what else we got? Bucks and the Grizzlies. Um, if you play Jaron Jackson Jr. and Desmond Bain, of course, they were pretty much kind of two locks on the slate just for the, the minutes and the usage that they're going to get with the starting lineup. And I believe this is going to be something we're going to go to every single night for uh, the Grizzlies being on a slate for the regular season is depending on, you know, who's who's got the better matchup between Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, these are going to be two guys I'm going to specifically be targeting because uh, even though you got D Rose out there, uh, Zaire Williams, I'm not too sure if he's going to actually stay in the starting lineup. Xavier Tillman only started because Steven Adams was rested uh, on, on the night. It's interesting because the usage is definitely between these two a lot. And depending on who actually has the matchup, that's who we're going to uh, definitely want to be rolling with and going with. So um, definitely something to, to take a tidbit and a note going into the regular season. For the uh, for the Bucks, of course, uh, Bochamp went out there, 8-2-3-8. Not too bad, but really wish that he gave me a little bit more. But n still, nonetheless, decent. I will accept that. Um, not bad at all for the night. Just really not too much from the Bucks anyway um, for the slate. The Magic taking on the Pelicans. Um Magic starters, they played so-so minutes, uh, really not too much. Wendell Carter Jr. actually was the better player between Paolo and him out there. Wish that uh, it went a different direction on that, uh, not too much on this side. Then coming out here for the the um, the Pelicans, my boy Dyson Daniels, he got the minutes, but just didn't get really the production that I really wanted from him. Um, 10 points, 2 assists, 4 rebounds, so not didn't kill you, but could have did a hell of a lot better. 25 minutes. Legit second most minutes just just wasn't there. Starters for for the Pelicans having Zion back. This is the first time the starters play for the Pelicans uh, since November of uh, last year. So that's really good to actually see them all out there gelling. Zion looks pretty dominant still himself. Uh, Could have did a little bit better with his scoring, but we'll, we'll take that. Bi still the the dominant uh, score that he is out there. Four to rebounds, two assists, four reba uh, four rebounds. We'll take that from uh, Bi any day. I'm definitely going to be paying attention to them minutes going into the next game that they play for the preseason because I'm going to want that. Uh, for the Jazz, taking on the Clippers, of course, for them, Walker Kessler, just putrid. Really expecting more from him. But Lori Larkinen, I had him as a, a staple and a core play um, for, for the slate. 16 points, 8 rebounds, uh, steal and a block. 23 minutes was expected from him. Did really good. Taylor Horton Tucker. Didn't do too much in that first preseason game, but definitely balled out in this one. Uh, probably should have should looked a little bit more at him, but did not. Um, nonetheless, man, that, that's a really good stat line. Everyone else off the bench, not too much from them. And then over here for the Clippers side, didn't mess too much with anybody on the Clippers anymore after I got word that Russell Westbrook was going to play. Um, went out there 15 minutes, five rebounds, three assists, two steals. Only took one shot. Kind of shocking that Russell only took one shot. But, of course, Kawhi, he took a... Took 12, 16, 1, 2. So, uh, really, eh, not too much. And then my boy Bones, where's Bones at? Bones, Bones, only 13 minutes. Seven points, five personal fouls, two assists, three rebounds. Maybe if it wasn't for the fouls, he would have got more. I, I went to sleep at that time, so I didn't even get to watch that game. And then Nuggets and the Suns. We got word that all of these uh, Sun stars were pretty much going to be out. So, that put uh, guys like Saban Lee, Grayson Allen, all their starters into uh, rotation. I had said in the chat Saban Lee was a decent uh, play, so definitely join the Discord uh, if you guys haven't. Uh, you get that through the Patreon. Hit up Patreon, then it'll let you get access into the Discord as well. But uh, Saban Lee was someone that I had said would probably be a decent play. Grayson Allen did didn't do too bad at all. Ten points, seven assists, two steals, a block, uh, three rebounds, the five uh, turnovers. That's that's just a little bit ugh, right there. Josh Kogi, not not bad for him as well. So really kind of wanted to focus on the starters for the Suns, but um, decent. And then for the Nuggets, um, them as well. Not too bad from what we got from the Nuggets. Uh, really kind of more of the bench was what what we wanted to get. Zeke Naji. Probably would have been the best play to play over there from Nuggets bench. But, um, hey, uh, you know, it's preseason. Uh, it's, it's hit or miss, really, with the information stuff that we get. And that's kind of going to be the same thing for tonight with the uh, the two games that we have. We have the Boston T Celtics taking on the uh, 76ers. The Kings taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. So, starting with the Boston Celtics side, we know that they rested their starters the, the last game. I would actually expect all of them to be back. And, actually, if we look over here at uh, Rotowire, which is what we're going to use a lot uh, this season in order to get our starting lineups, make sure we have some confirmation. Of course, uh, projected lineups for today, we have Holiday, Brown, Tatum, Porzingis, Al Horford. And then uh, for Philly, Tyrese Maxey, Patrick Beverly, um, Tobias Harris, P.J. Tucker, Joel Embiid. Uh, both of these situations we actually have to monitor. Hopefully, we actually get this news for what uh, these teams are doing. I fully expect the Boston Celtics to actually run their guys and play them again here. 
And if we actually pay attention to what they did in that first um, preseason game that they played, who did they played in the first preseason game. Uh, first preseason game that they played, uh, starters, they kind of played deep minutes. 27 minutes for Tatum, 25 for Porzingis, 21 for Al Horford, um, 26 for Jalen Brown, uh, 25 for Derek White. I would expect Derek White to go back to the bench and you start Drew Holiday, get him back into the mix with your starters that you have. And then it's going to be a roulette of which one of these starters are we going to want to actually run and roll with for the Boston Celtics? Because in all honesty, they're, they're some of the best plays on a slate, just the production, the usage that they actually have. Um, that, that's what we have to figure out here in this position of spot for the the Celtics not going to say any of the bench guys like Peyton Pritchard um not when you gave her Sam Hauser uh Cornette Savi uh Mom High Luke uh Bruschetti where's um Ben Banton all these guys not saying that they're not going to be in play because of course they should get some run and if we actually look at what they did last preseason in their third preseason game this is uh this is the box score from that one the starters actually played some pretty decent minutes 24 24 31 25 28 minutes from them uh Jalen Brown 25 minutes in that game uh Von Lee uh, of course was a backup uh, center right there Sam Hauser actually started in that game so gonna I'm going to expect some third quarter run possibly here for the Celtics. And I'm going to say that specifically because looking at the preseason schedule, um, they have this one today and then they only have two other games uh, left for them. So I would expect minutes to slowly be ramping up. And this would be a game I would actually expect for them to possibly go ahead and ramp up some minutes and not just throw them to the fire in this last game going up against the Hornets. Maybe this one might be the actual full rest day. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into the assumption of, of increased minutes. Now um, I'm going to link this down in the, the, the uh, description hoop hype is a site that i actually use i it took me a minute to find it this is a site that i use that if you just click right here you go to um to to the uh sorry to the nba tab and this will give you all of the the news and stuff that's coming out for whatever team you're looking for so you click here boston celtics was the team that i'm highlighting right now uh, let's say we'll, we'll go we'll click atlanta real quick go to atlanta boom it's going to give you all the stuff so post game the, the beat writers and stuff, people who are covering and talking about the team, you're going to actually see it right here. So this will eliminate you trying to scour through Twitter, trying to find, uh, looking for beat writers and things like that to actually get the information that you're looking for uh, for these teams, um, you know, like we how we, we spend. Sometimes the stuff will come up here, sometimes it's not, but this is a, a pretty condensed spot where you can go to to try to actually find all the information that you are actually looking for, especially when it comes down to preseason and it's something that I use for Summer League as well. Definitely will link this for you guys down inside of the description if you guys are looking for it. And if you're not trying to do that, and you're just trying to see all the retweets, check out the No Days Off Twitter. The link for that is down in the description. I have been retweeting every single piece of news that I can find. I have been retweeting it out for you guys so you guys do not miss it right there. All right, back over here looking at the uh, Boston Celtics. For them, I understand that Jason Tatum, he's technically like the alpha, the, the main guy for this team. Then it's going to be Jalen Brown, Christoph Porzingis. Uh, looking at what they did actually in that first game, getting Porzingis worked in there. Porzingis, 17 points, five rebounds, one assist. So I'm going to use a little bit of DVP metric here uh, looking at it. The uh, 76ers last season gave up, what, about, uh, looking down here, the tie for the 23rd most points, fantasy points given up to the power four position. That is the position that Porzingis is out there playing. I'm actually going to prioritize Porzingis over everyone else uh, for the, the these uh, Celtics. Of course, we're going to be end up playing multiple of these guys inside of our lines um, for it, but definitely Porzingis and maybe a Tatum will be the two that I'm going to mainly focus on and then probably look to bring it back with someone off the bench that should actually get some decent run, which normally will, of course, be Peyton Pritchard would be one of the main guys that we're going to look at. Uh, Hauser, of course, would be another one that we can uh, take. Um, Quitta, he didn't look too bad in his run and stuff that he's actually been uh, getting out there. And then Banton will be the other one that I will actually want to uh, bring it back from the Celtics as possible plays. Jalen Brown, um, you can definitely go him and Porzingis instead. I definitely am interested to see how Holiday is going to really mix in and factor in here. I'm not going to mess with Holiday just yet because I want to see his usage and how he runs with the starters um, before I go there. But Porzingis looked really well out there. And just the, the way they're playing him... Um, with, with the starters, I really do like like what I've seen in that first game. So definitely going to be just going – at least Porzingis will be one of my, my main staples and plays uh, from them. Now, the Philadelphia side, we really do need to get news if Embiid is going to actually play in this game, if Harden is going to play in this game. I know Harden, he's showing up for the training camps. Of course, he's still pissy with uh, uh, Philly for not trading him by now, but who cares? If Harden doesn't play, of course, we can run back to Tyrese Maxey. Um, of course, you're going to have Paul Reed, um, Tobias Harris, Paul Reed, of course, if Joel Embiid is going to miss. Kelly Oubre Jr. is out there as well. Mo Bamba, he's on this team. It's really just going to be interesting. Patrick Beverly, 
Uh, Patrick Beverly, a low fantasy point per minute producer, not really going to even mess with that. Danny Green, same thing. Um, Hauser, P.J. Tucker, not, none of these guys really tickle the whistle at all for plays. Tyrese Maxey, of course, would be the best one out of all of them. Um, don't mind Maxey, period. Uh, either Even if Harden plays, even if um, Embiid plays, Maxey is still a play that you're going to want to run back and more likely is going to be like almost over 50% owned, especially if you get word that um, Nick Nurse is actually trying to ramp up their minutes for them. Again, like I said, uh, really no news has come out too much in regards to Philly. Looked already. Uh, this morning didn't see too much or anything out there for them i uh, just seen some notes and things like that in regards to the sixer camp that you know nurse said um where is it harden he's been in good spirits however 34 you'll miss me today blah 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 communication clippers talking about them trying to actually get the, uh, the trade going on joel and b daniel milton felton were sidelines harden and b milton returned to practice on tuesday um third consecutive so nothing um We'll be interested to see if Harden actually plays. They said that he's ramping into to playing condition. So maybe even if Harden plays, he might only play like 15 minutes. Might be something that we actually see for Harden. So that, that'll be interesting uh, nonetheless. But um, yeah, not, not too much for Philly. Now going over to the Kings side, I think that they're going to continue to ramp up what they're doing with their starters and everything for them. Um, looking at what they did in that first game, starters, they played sub 18 minutes for all their starters. Looking at what they did in their second preseason game last season, uh, same coach and everything for them. They ran them up. They played 20-ish minutes. So that's what I'm going to go under the impression that they're going to play here today. Again, another team I really haven't gotten too much. Just talking about cohesion and um, how how they're they're playing together, getting involved, moving the ball, staying in front of the ball, things like that. Uh, so not too much has come out from the Kings. Of course, we should get a lot of this stuff after uh, morning shoot rounds and stuff happen for these teams. Uh, this is the 10 o'clock game, so hopefully we actually get some type of news for them. Of course. Still, just trying to figure out exactly where we're going to go with with some of these 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 plays right here. Uh, but for the Kings, of course, you kind of know Sabonis, Fox, both powerhouses for this team. They lead the team in regards to what's going to happen and what's done. Here's the Barnes, Keegan Murray. Um, forgot how you say Mitchell's name, but I think it's like uh, Davion Mitchell. Is it, yeah, Davion Mitchell. Uh, him. Uh, these are guys we can look at. Uh, Malik Monk, um, Kessler Edwards. So it's really just going to depend on actually who's going to play. Of course, you're going to want to prioritize Fox, a bonus as plays that we can actually take from right here. Uh, if we're going to actually expect for our starters to actually get some decent burn. So bonus Fox be uh, two at the top of the list. Harrison Barnes really hit or miss. Really don't like playing Harrison Barnes ever in my life. But if you got to, you could definitely shove him in a small four position. Keegan Murray will definitely be uh, one of the ones I would look at as a possible play that we can actually go to. Again, we just got to get some news. And until that news comes out, I can't really give you guys a full solid foundation. But definitely at least Fox bonus. Of course, be your two main staples that you're going to want to look at. And then just coming out here to the to the bench. Um just looking through seeing what we can actually get from some of their bench play looking at the kings who did they actually get run to last game it was kind of just a melting pot of who they did but uh, maybe um sasha i know they've been talking a lot about sasha in uh training camp so maybe we can look at look at playing some sasha uh for sure um jordan ford probably another one that we could actually possibly take a chance on and chris Rate, i know he's actually pretty decent so chris Rate, but definitely maybe looking more at some uh some sasha would be one for sure and then lastly, we got the Lakers. Looking at the Lakers, um, of course, word. We got to get word of LeBron James. Is he going to play? All right, so he's not going to play today. Now we just need to know if Anthony Davis is going to play. If uh, both Bron and Davis are going to be out, Christian Wood, of course, you know I'm going to want to go back to him. D'Angelo Russell, he's been lighting it up throughout the preseason, so both of these guys will be stable plays. If Reeves is in, definitely we'll be going right back to Reeves. Of course, with uh, with AD and Bron being out, Rui will be another one we go to, especially if Vando is still out. Let's look and see what the Lakers did. Their last preseason game uh, recently was what against the Nets. I know it was a shootout between Austin Reeves and um, and uh, Cam. Looking down, yeah, I would go right back to Rui, Christian Wood. Don't mind him, D'Lo. Definitely, if they go ahead and ramp him up to 20-ish minutes, Austin Reeves, of course, you can, no problem going to, to any of those guys right there. And then uh, Max Christie still will go right back, take a stab at him. Uh, Hood will definitely go right back to him as well. As uh, plays, these are guys that they've talked up, that they are actually giving run to. These guys at the bottom of the bench are not even really uh, messing with them. But Christian Wood, Jackson Hayes, nah. Uh, Rui for sure. But we just got to get the news and word if AD is going to be out. If AD is in, of course, AD, don't mind him as a play. You could definitely go there. He's a pretty decent fantasy point per minute player, but I just don't see them pushing him uh, too deep and too far. So priorities for me, of course, Austin Reeves. You can go D'Lo, Christian Wood, um, Rui would be the main guys that I'd want to get to 
if uh, both AD and Bron are out. And then if just uh, LeBron's out, AD, D'Lo, uh, Christian Wood, not bad. But Rue would be the main guy that I want to get to and take, especially if Vando is going to miss again uh, today. That will be just more minutes. All right, guys, that's really going to be the breakdown. That's it. Unfortunately, prop sites, uh, there is no props up for either one of these uh these things just yet so no props i can go over for you guys definitely as soon as that drops i will try to get a proper two out for today's slate um if you guys are enjoying the content make sure you guys hit that like button if you guys want to see the player pool the course the uh, everything that i'm putting out over here definitely uh check out the link in the uh the, for the patreon and also join the discord as you see right here this was the the player pool that i put up yesterday along with my notes um right here for everyone to be able to go over and see i'll zoom in a little bit for you guys but uh went over everything that that i liked i put everyone inside of my player pool and uh stuff for you guys so definitely if you guys are looking for more information stuff like that this will be out for the actual nba season as well it'll be pretty much like my cheat sheet player pool with my notes and stuff that i'm, I'm looking at of course i will actually put players that'll be uh cash gpp core type things uh in here for you guys as well when it comes down to it and the salaries will actually be populated in here as well whenever it comes down working on some stuff on the back end to get this uh for you guys hopefully you can actually get this cheat sheet out for more sports besides just the nba definitely we'll look to do one for the nfl as well uh, so definitely you guys are looking for for more tools that'll help you guys out when cash out definitely join us over here at the northern off group and uh yeah with that being said it's your boy zo peace